Good morning everyone. Welcome again to another learning day in our English 8 class. We are now in our fourth quarter, week 2. For today's lesson, we will talk about primary and secondary sources. What are the objectives for today? So, at the end of the lesson, the learners are expected to differentiate primary from secondary sources, define an outline, and expand the content of an outline using notes from primary and secondary sources. Before we proceed with our main topic for today, let's widen our vocabulary skills with our activity, What's the Word? That's the Word. And our word for today is source. It is a noun. It is spelled as S-O-U-R-C-E. Source. It is a place, person, or thing from which something comes or can be obtained. Sentence. I knew the source of that news. So, once again, our word for today is source. Try to use the word source in your own meaningful sentence. Let's keep moving. I have here an activity entitled Fact Check. All you have to do is to study the claim made by President Rodrigo Duterte which was posted in social media. Then, answer the followed-up questions. Are you ready? The claim is, President Rodrigo Duterte said he will punch Senator Manny Pacquiao over Pacquiao's insistence that the President is not doing enough to assert the Philippines' territorial rights against China. So for the questions, can you identify the source of the news? Yes or no? Can you find this news in other websites? Yes or no? What's your final verdict? Is it fake or real? This news is false. The fact is, Duterte did not say this quote about Pacquiao but about former Foreign Secretary Albert Del Rosario. The code card containing this claim was edited to reflect Pacquiao's name. Why we fact-check this? This claim was emailed to Rockler for verification. During your grade 7, primary and secondary sources were already discussed. Can you still remember them? So, let us see if you can still identify them with this activity entitled P or S. So, just read the following descriptions and determine if it is a P for primary or S for secondary source. Number one, a classroom history textbook. Number two, a copy of the text of the Philippine Constitution. Number three, a biography of Carlos P. Romulo. Number four, a video of Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. Five, an interview with a survivor of a natural disaster. Six, an opinion of the editor from the newspaper. Seven, a Wikipedia article about George Washington. 8. Anne Frank's autobiography, The Diary of a Young Girl. 9. A map of Africa from 1900. And number 10. A story on a televised national news program about a bill passed by Congress. In writing an academic essay or research, you have to gather information and evidence from a variety of sources like books, news articles, 
interviews, and different websites. So, in this week's module, we will discuss the primary and secondary sources, what they are, and when you can use them. Using your answers in learning test 1, what do you mean by a primary source? A primary source is anything that gives you direct evidence about people, events, or phenomena that you are researching. Primary sources will usually be the main objects of your analysis. If you are researching the past, you cannot directly access it yourself, so you need primary sources that were produced at the time by participants or witnesses. If you are researching something current, your primary sources can be collected by yourself. So, let us see what are the examples of primary sources. We have photographs, survey, letters, experiment, music scores, maps, acts of law, photos, data sets, novels, legal rulings, speeches and interviews, and other journal journal articles and technical papers. What about a secondary source? What do you mean by it? So, a secondary source is anything that describes, interprets, evaluates, or analyzes information from primary sources. What are the examples of secondary sources? We have newspaper report by someone who was not present, biography, books, articles, and documentaries that synthesize information on a topic, synopsis and descriptions of artistic works, encyclopedias and textbooks that summarize information and ideas, reviews and essays that evaluate or interpret something. There are also newspaper articles and others. When can we use primary and secondary source? So we use the primary source to make new discoveries, provide credible evidence for your arguments, and give authoritative information about your topic. For secondary source, it can be used in gaining background information on the topic, supporting or contrasting your arguments with other researchers' ideas, and gathering information from primary sources that you can't access directly. Which do you think is a better source? Is it primary source or secondary source? Most research uses both primary and secondary sources. They complement each other to help you build a convincing argument. Primary sources are more credible as evidence, but secondary sources show how your work relates to existing research. Now that you know the meaning, the example, and when to use primary and secondary sources, let us do learning task 2 entitled, Sort It Out. What are you going to do? You are going to sort the sources and the characteristics in the appropriate circle. Any sources or characteristics that are both primary or secondary may be written in the center circle. So, let us see this Venn diagram where you will write your answers. Here are some of the correct answers from learning task 2. So, I have here types of sources and their examples in different format. So, 1. Primary sources A. Diary B. Speech C. Autobiography D. Interview 2. Secondary sources, A. Textbook, B. Biography, C. Encyclopedia, D. Newspaper. 
Upon seeing this format, what can you say about the idea given by this information? Correct! We can easily distinguish the information in Learning Task 2 from these organized written ideas. So, what do you call this form? Yes, it is an outline. Then, what is an outline? An outline is a breakdown of the main and supporting ideas in your essay, report, or speech. It is also a tool to organize written ideas about a topic into a logical order. So, this one is also called as a blueprint or plan for your paper. What are the two types of an outline? One is topic outline that summarizes the main and subtopics in words or phrases. Number two is the sentence outline. This one uses complete sentence for each main and subtopics as it is more informative compared to topic outline. Let's see once again this part, the types of sources and their examples. What an example of outline do you think is this? Yes, this is an example of a topic outline. Let's study the second example, which is sentence outline. It is alcohol and drug abuse that can affect one economically. So, as we can see, the main topic and subtopics are consisting of complete sentences. That's why it is called sentence outline. You can see the difference between topic outline and sentence outline. Now that we know the types of sources, the primary and secondary sources, as well as the outline, let us do learning task 3 entitled, Accomplish the Line. Using the information taken from the secondary source, accomplish the topic and sentence outline below. For letter A, accomplish this sentence outline. And letter B, accomplish this topic outline. Well done, students! Now, let's move on with our assessment entitled, Choose Me, Primary or Secondary. Just choose Primary or Secondary to answer the following questions. Number one, Speech is an example of which type of source, primary or secondary? Number two, in research writing, researchers are advised to use which type of sources, primary or secondary? Number three, the statement, I heard or learned about it from somebody who was there, refers to Primary or secondary? Number four, which source helps the student to have a deeper understanding about the history? Primary or secondary? And number five, if you read this newspaper to get information in writing an article, which source are you using? Primary or secondary? To sum it up, what should we remember about primary and secondary sources? Can you differentiate them? Remember, for primary source, it is first-hand account, record, or evidence about a person, place, object, or an event. For secondary source, it is an account, 
record or evidence that comes from an original or primary source. Congratulations! You made it! So, as a student, why is it important to know the sources of information? Sources help us to know whether the information we gather are reliable or not. Not all of the sources are reliable and true. So basically, knowing the sources has a big impact in your data gathering or for the information you gather. It is also to help us to have credible evidence. So additionally, it is to help us to find the most credible information for our topic. That's why it is really important. I hope you learned something for our topic for today. See you once again in our next topic. Goodbye and thank you.